but the four Marcellus uh, kids and everything that definitely have careers and out there doing great work in the jazz world. Ellis was their father. A lot of people consider him in a lot of ways to be the father of kind of that newer New Orleans sound and things of that nature. So he has uh, passed on and uh, definitely, um, from what I understand, his was, um, from what I understand, definitely uh, COVID-19 related, but he was definitely a jazz legend and definitely a jazz great and uh, definitely uh, people in New Orleans, people throughout the country, people out through the world definitely recognize Ellis's great talent, and uh, he did pass away. I mean, he did live a very good life. I think he made it into his early 80s and things of that nature. And the same for the great and legendary, and I did uh, load up some of his music, this next uh, artist that I'm going to mention everything, but Bill Withers also passed on, and I know probably even you remember some great Bill Withers songs that you liked and everything, Dean, because we all had our Bill Withers songs that we liked back in the 70s and things of that nature. I was a big fan and that's one of them that I loaded up of Grandma's Hands. But I know a lot of folks also like Lean On Me and Ain't No Sunshine and some other great Bill Withers tunes. And then the uh, third person that I was going to mention, I meant to mention him, I believe, last week because he's actually been gone now for a while, is the legendary Harlem Globetrotter Curly Neal, who was actually out of the Greensboro area. But, uh, you know, a lot of folks knew him from his exploits for many years with the Harlem Globetrotters. So we definitely must give salute to all three of these folks who have passed on into the ancestral grounds, but their memories will definitely be remembered for a very long time. Also, Curly Neal was an HBCU legend, Johnson C. Smith State uh, University. So, you know, we never know. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, they're following the directions, but those were the directions given to us by the elders and the ancestors a long time ago. For some reason, we forgot them. So now we're being made to remember them. And maybe, you know, I remember my grandfather said, you know, let people walk up on you, make sure you don't shake their hands because the hands dirty and all of these different things that we, in the age of inclusion, try to pass to the wayside. But now we have to remember them again. So you know what? We're going to jump into this PSA real quick, and then we're going to bring our guest in and straight talk with Dana Mark, y'all. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m. I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m. I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m. I shower. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m. I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m. I shower. I start laundry at 8. At 10, we go for a walk. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. And we're back with Scott Sawyer, and we have him here at Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Mr. Sawyer, welcome. You're on the line. How are you doing, Scott? Thanks for having me. Glad to hear Glad to have you, Scott. Scott is a longtime musician that has been playing music around this area for a number of years and is definitely one of our treasures here in the Durham community. That's the way I like to consider him. I mean, he has performed with some of the amazing artists here in this area. He's had the privilege of performing with Lois Dawson and Nina Freelon, and the list goes on and on. He's also had his work done uh, on definitely uh, some movies, some, I believe, TV shows, and things of that nature. So Scott has definitely been doing a number of things in the music world. He's got a new CD that is out, um, and it'll definitely be getting a lot of releases, and hopefully it'll be getting some playing dates. But, of course, like everybody else, he is waiting for this uh, pandemic to end, so it's definitely impacting our performing artists in a big way because, unfortunately, the venues are shut down, uh, the uh, bigger venues like the theaters and, of course, the nightclubs and the, even the colleges and places that uh, Scott would usually probably be playing right about this time and everything. So, uh, (laughs) Scott, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life. I know that you're probably doing what you're supposed to be doing and probably doing some woodshedding and, of course, promoting 
the CD and everything and hoping that this thing ends sooner versus later, that even though we're hearing various predictions and everything, so that you can get back out on the road and do what you do so well, which is playing some great and amazing music. I mean, every time I've seen you, whether it's been at one of the local festivals, uh, playing either with yourself or playing with some of the other artists that you perform with, I am always amazed at how talented you are, and I consider you to be both a great friend but also a great talent here in this area. Well, thanks, Mark. Thanks for all the all the kind words. <laughs> Write that down so I don't forget it. <laughs> I'll tell you what I've been doing, man. I've been um, I've been kind of forced to rethink uh, how I'm, how I'm going to move forward for a while, uh, making a living, because um, my uh, I work part time at East Carolina University. I've been I've been teaching one day a week there for for uh, 10 years. And fortunately, I still have that job because uh, I'm teaching online. Uh, but in the middle of May, that job ends until until the end of August. So uh, the bulk of my income has come from, um, from uh, teaching at the Durham Jazz Workshop. Uh, and then other income has come from private students and, and performances. So the Durham Jazz Workshop, uh, like we had to shut down on March 13th. And right now, the earliest that we could open is the beginning of June, but it's not a given that we're going to be able to do that because obviously we're being very careful. Um, oh, yeah. So, so what I've been doing is uh, figuring out how to transition to teaching online um, because I basically had to figure it out to accommodate my jazz improv class at ECU and my jazz performance majors, uh, you know, applied instrument majors. And the good news is um, online, well, the good news is that the technology seems to have advanced quite a bit since I last uh, attempted teaching online about six years ago. Uh, I was using Skype uh, at the time, and it just didn't work very well for me. Now, I've to be fair, I'm sure Skype has uh, improved since then, and I'm sure the, that the Internet is faster. But somebody suggested to me a while back to try Zoom, and um, a lot of people are using Zoom, and I found it to be, to be pretty good. So I've been teaching online for a couple of weeks, and I'm comfortable with it now. The only downside is when you're – well, when I'm teaching jazz guitar or jazz improvisation – a lot of what I like to do with my students is is to play with them in real time, you know, to perform with them in real time. And that's not really possible. So I've been figuring out other ways to be effective. And I'll put it this way, even when things return back to normal, I'm still going uh, to try to build an online teaching presence because uh, it's actually it's actually been a lot of fun. So something positive has come out of this for me as far as the well, work goes. Well, that's really yeah, good go to know, and I've, and I've heard people saying that, that there have been positive things that have come out of this in one form or fashion or another, including people that have been doing um, online concerts and things of that nature in order to break the monotony of, as me and Dean were talking about, watching Netflix and doing some other things. I know that Shauna Tucker did an online concert with her um, piano player. I believe that was last week, and, of course, the North Star folks did one not that long ago. I think it might have been a week and a half ago. Have you done any online concerts uh that you put online to um, that people can watch during this time of some of your newer works or even some of your older work so that people can catch it that way. And also, if you would, give a little bit more details as to how you've been making the Zoom calls work. Because I know when I was talking to my friend, Brett Chambers, who's a professor over at Central, he was saying that he was having some uh, adjustment periods as well because some of his students, I think he said he had two that were in Texas, a couple, one that was actually, I believe, uh, overseas, and I don't remember where, and the same with Trevi when we had her on last week, because actually one of her students, I believe, was actually in China, so they've been, you know, having the students that are all over, definitely all over the country, and in some cases, all over the world, so how have you been uh, managing this with the Zoom calls, if you want to just tell a little bit about how it's worked in your uh, situation, and how you've been making it work, and where these students might be from, are they mostly all here in Durham, or have they been scattered around? No, they're scattered around. Um, some of them uh, have gone home. Some of the ECU students have gone home. So I guess home would be Virginia. Uh, I think maybe one of them is in Pennsylvania. Um, some of them I think are still in Greenville. 
um, the ones that had apartments. Uh, one of them is up in um, in New Hampshire, and I teach a jazz improv class at two o'clock on on Tuesdays for ECU, and there's six people in the class, and I, for two weeks in a row, all six have managed to make it online, and um, there haven't been uh, any any uh, freezing screens, you know, frozen screens or frozen audio. I think a lot of it depends on your on your internet connection. If you've got a pretty good Wi-Fi signal uh, and a decent um, you know laptop, uh, I think it I think it works really quite well. Um, I don't know I don't think it works quite as well if you're using your phone, but I've I've been kind of surprised, actually very surprised, and that's why I'm kind of optimistic that that moving forward I can continue to utilize the uh, technology. No, oh, yeah. Well, as best as I can tell, you've always been one that has been one to utilize modern technology in all the music that you've been doing, and both even before this current crisis that we're in, and just in terms of your music in general. What if you had to say to somebody what one of your personal favorite albums was? What would it be, and who are some of the favorite people that you've worked with have been? Is there anybody that you really? Or were just honored to have worked with that are among that list of so many people that you've worked with that have definitely uh, a long uh, discuss, you know, long repertoire of music that you have. I mean, I'm honored. I'm not trying to evade the question, but quite frankly, any anybody that uh, asked me to be involved in their music, uh, I'm I'm honored to be to be a part of it um, because I can tell you that as somebody who hires musicians to work, to work with me, you know, I, whenever I'm uh, thinking about who to hire for a performance or who to hire for a recording session, I, uh, I remind myself that it's best to work with people who, who really like the way you play and who, who really want you to be involved, you know, not because of who you know or what you've done. Um, Clearly, um, you know, Nina Freelon, I have very fond, you know, feelings for Nina because uh, she and I kind of got started in a way uh, in terms of reaching out to, to wider audiences. It kind of began to happen for both of us at the same time. And, and for me, quite frankly, it happened, you know, through my association with her. Uh, her star has risen pretty high in the sky. Um, but I've worked with other people who aren't as well known you know, Lois is one of them. Um, the guy that plays saxophone on, on my new record, Dave Finucane, is a brilliant, brilliant musician. Uh, Kobe Watkins is the drummer. Ron Brendel, who lives in Charlotte. I mean, these are some of the best musicians that I've ever played with, including all the famous, iconic musicians that I've been in contact with, who I'm not going to, you know, like spend time right now dropping names, but... Um, so as as far as my favorite album goes, I, you know I don't know. Uh, right now, my favorite record is my new record, Night Visions, <laughs> you know, because it's it's fresh. Uh, but I, I really, I think I, I I think I've learned to like them all. Sometimes I don't like them so much right after I've recorded them, and that was certainly the case with Night Visions. I you know I I wasn't sure about it because some of the music was was really new and there wasn't. Uh, the opportunity to perform, you know, most of it ahead of time. And we basically went in the studio for two and a half days and, and recorded. We didn't have rehearsals ahead of time. We would rehearse a tune and, and record it and then move on to the next tune. And it's actually a very exciting way to work. I think Miles worked that way in the past. And uh, so that was one of the reasons why I hired uh, Dave and Kobe and Ron, because I, I knew that I could bring them into a situation where every every arrangement wasn't you know mapped out from beginning to end. I kept things you know pretty loose uh, on on a lot of the record, not all of it, but but on most of it, because I wanted to see what suggestions they would have and what they would bring to the music, and they did a hell of a job. Yeah. Um, now, even before this current uh, pandemic that we're in the middle of, folks were definitely uh, having mixed thoughts about the way that music was going in terms of whether jazz was getting enough love from the commercial world and commercial radio, and also whether um, 
but then the internet and uh, YouTube and I would even argue things like Reverb Nation and other things have kind of were opening up the music and everything. How do you feel uh, jazz is doing as a musical art form as well?